although Adobe Premiere Pro is fundamentally a different application where the focus is on the visuals rather than the sound, many of the design elements may well be familiar to you. I've got a very simple sequence here that I want to send over to Audition. And I want to show you a couple of different ways of achieving this. There's a simple way that takes the whole sequence over, and there's also a way of sending individual items. To save you downloading a lot of files, I've just made a very, very simple sequence here. So you can see that we've got this chap speaking at the beginning. An energy drink company committed to health and fitness. Johanna music represents comes in. what Aqua is all about. When I first started ride, I was uh, really taken with her ability. She has it. Then there's a shot of something completely different. So it's a very, very basic sequence, but it doesn't matter. It's going to illustrate the point. Imagine this was a very complex sequence with lots of layers of audio, lots of tracks, lots of complicated visuals. And I wanted to send this over to Adobe Audition so I could produce a complete mix. I'm going to go to the Edit menu. I'm going to choose Edit in Adobe Audition, and I'm going to choose Sequence. You do have to have the Timeline panel active for this to work, otherwise it's going to be grayed out. Or if you've got a clip selected, the Clip option will be available. So I'm going to choose Sequence, and I get some pretty straightforward options. First of all, I get to name the file that's going to be created. Now I'm going to call this Export to Audition, and let me browse to put this into our assets folder, so you can work with this as well. There we go. Let's put it in here. And then we've got some pretty straightforward options. First of all, are we going to take the entire sequence or just the work area? Premiere Pro has a part of the timeline, an additional feature just here, this bar that specifies, if you like, a region of interest in time. You can disable it in Premiere Pro CS6 and just use in and out marks in much the way that you'd use a marker with duration in Audition. But in any case, I'm going to take the entire sequence. And then if we're sending our audio clips, and you'll notice that this piano ambient track, which is one of the assets we've been using in Audition, has actually been trimmed and not all of it is in use. You can decide if you want to have additional handles when you create the new files for Adobe Audition, because Premiere Pro is going to duplicate this audio and create a separate copy for Audition to work on. Handles just means extra stuff, extra content, above and beyond the stuff that's included in the sequence. I tend to be pretty generous with my handles, both for visuals and for audio clips, because it's a pretty small amount of additional hard drive space, but it can make quite a big difference to the flexibility you have to make edits and changes later on. So I'm going to set this to at least four seconds. We also have the option to export a preview video, and I think this is a really good idea. When you choose this option, Premiere Pro is going to flatten all of the layers of video and all of the special effects. Effectively, it's going to render out a layer of video that represents all of the visuals for your sequence. This is super useful in Adobe Audition because it allows you to make your audio edits based on the pictures. Without this, you would just get sound. Then we've also got the option to render audio clip effects, because the effects that you use in Premiere Pro are not going to translate into Adobe Audition. So if you have done anything like apply an audio EQ effect, which, which you can do in Premiere Pro, the audio features are pretty good, then if you want that to persist, tick this box. If you want it to disappear and go back to the raw audio, which most audio engineers would prefer, then untick this box. Same thing for the clip volume keyframing. If you have keyframed the audio in Premiere Pro, that will translate and appear with the clips inside of Audition. Most engineers want all this stuff removed, so you have a tick box, you can take it out if you like. And then you've got Open in Adobe Audition, so when this is finished, it's going to open up the files in Audition ready to work on them. I'm going to keep that option on as well. So now I'm going to click OK. Premiere Pro is going to make copies of all that media, it's going to prepare an XML file effectively for Adobe Audition, and here's Adobe Audition. So now what we've got, if I just zoom out a little bit with my mouse, is a representation of that original video. You can see if I drag through here where the clip changes, it's actually a single item now. This has been rendered as a single video file. And I've got those two pieces of audio. Now again, these are renames. Notice this is now called Piano Ambient Extracting. If I toggle over to Premiere Pro, it's actually, if I zoom in a touch, called Piano Ambient. This is to designate that 
the file has been copied, you're no longer working on the original media. Unlike Adobe Audition, Premiere Pro is a fully non-destructive editing system. So any changes you make must never apply to the original media. And for this reason, it's important for Premiere Pro to create duplicates. I can now work on this. I've got my audio. Imagine I had 50 or 100 clips here. I'm ready to produce the mix for my film or TV program. And there is another way of doing this if you just have a single file to work on. If I just play back the beginning of this interview, for example, you can hear we've got a noise in the background, a telephone ringing. Drink company committed to health and fitness. Johanna. So it's pretty common to want to just send a single file over to Audition to repair it. And you can do that very easily by right clicking and choosing, if I just scroll down a little bit, edit clip in Adobe Audition. And if I choose this option, you'll notice that if I toggle over to Audition, you can see, in fact, there's my interview noise extracted audio. Just resize this panel a bit so you can see. And if I toggle back over to Premiere Pro, you can see once again, this is no longer called interview noise audio. This is now called interview noise audio extracted. Premiere Pro's copied the file, replaced the original with the copy, and it's the copy that we're working on in Audition. I can now use this classic spectral display to locate that telephone ring, select it, delete it, save with Control S or Command S, toggle back to Premiere Pro and play the repaired audio. A drink company committed to health and fitness. If I change my mind, I can always undo with Control or Command Z and I'm back to the original audio. So that's two ways of sending your creative work directly from Adobe Premiere Pro to Adobe Audition.